Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we are back in automation with the Light Campaign V4.0 and all its new features and we are going to start a new Let's Play of the campaign in this version. And you have voted on what is supposed to be the theme of the campaign and it is building a Freenian company that is super economical. Oh, it's Casa. Superico Inc was created before the war, before the big war, the great war even, in which uh, was was misusing its factories for tank building and stuff. And uh, yes, uh, it was known for very mundane cars that didn't really stand out at all. And that is a shame. And they don't see a way forward with this company unless we get a unique selling point. And that unique selling point is building super economical cars but there's a bit of a catch with this one because they couldn't think of anything specific until someone showed up in their roster of potential new engineers a young gasmian fella uh, well a newly gasmian fella because he's from dead germany or the dead germany equivalent equivalent which is just north of Freenia, and uh, his name is Hans-Dieter Krause and he's a budding young engineer who is specializing in building extremely economical engines that are not known for much else. He's a bit of an ass and he is a besser wiss on top but uh, well sometimes you need to to take a bitter pill don't you. So um, we are going to set up a uh, an advanced uh, campaign and Superico Inc. is uh, setting up everything on insane, but we are changing a few things. I want to play at uh, with a slightly different setup than normal. I want to start out with two medium factories and still have a score multiplier above six. So what are we going to do in order to get that? Well, mm, uh, let's see here first. That's all fine. Cash, yes. Uh, okay, I think we need to up the competition level. That is almost there. Uh, let's go there. Uh, 606. And that is also the number you need to aim for when you're playing along if you want to and see how you fare. And I think what we're going for is because we are super efficient after all. Uh, fuel system and exhaust and you ask like, why the hell exhaust well exhaust in this version and uh, I think the previous one as well it does Im improve overall engine efficiency if we have a bit of quality in there so not too far-fetched we're not revving that high so don't need bottom end or top end or that fancy stuff uh, okay that sounds like a pretty good setup I think we roll from here 100 million in the bank Lots of net worth because of the factory setup, but the score multiplier of 6.1, uh, 6.01 is not to be underestimated, especially with this competition slider up there. All right, let's get started. Congratulations on starting Superico Inc. Your family connections have granted you access to a level zero car dealership network. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dad. And of course, we are going to start a car from scratch and let's have a quick look what segment we are aiming for. Well, family is the big one, obviously. Uh, in Fruinia, we have city being pretty large, but commuter is large too. Uh, there's plenty of room in here. So if we build a small city car, commuter car, and a sedan, so yeah, so that it's family compatible, um, then I think this should work out just fine. And Hedvesia, whoa. Look at how much money that adds to that market. They have a massive commuter market, don't they? Yeah, that's pretty large. Okay, commuter it is. Oh yes, I I I take I oh fuck ah uh not available. Sorry. Then we are going for the small one, the 1940s sedan, one of my favorite starting bodies. This one for sporty companies. This one for non-sporty companies. Uh, looking good. All right. We are building in a medium factory. That means that we can go with panel material steel. We already have the steel presses. And that also means that we should be price competitive 
unless we um, unless we crank up some sliders, which we shouldn't. Um, also, I'm going to check if the quality slider here might might be necessary to reduce a bit, you know, depending on engineering time. But we don't go full overboard with uh, comfort here. We're not making a super luxury company, but a decent one. Like semi-trailing arm in the back, not too bad. Uh, instead of um, 24 months, that is just 18 there. And leather frame makes it pretty cheap. Well, and this is it. Let me quickly describe to you how that board meeting went. Ah, oh, ciao, Alfredo. Ah, Mario. Uh, how is it hanging, old fella? Yeah, yeah, good, good, good. Thank, thanks. Um, so, uh, how, how about that uh, new engineering guy that we have in here? Um, yeah, that he seems to be a bit of a douche, eh? Yeah. Um, let's let's say just just that we are on the same page. Let's say that if he turns out to fuck it up, or if we fuck it up, we just blame it on him. How does that sound? Ah, Mario, brilliant idea. Ah, uh, so I'm, I think I'm guessing what uh, Hans-Dieter Krause is going to make here. Let me attempt that. Yeah, pretty simple, really. The uh, Superico three-cylinder, 800? 800, yeah, I think, I think he's going pretty low, so... Let's try that. E46 for either economical or engine, but depending on, on what you prefer. Let's create this, this little project and see what he does. Oh shit, he is, he, here he comes. All right. Hello there, yes. This is, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Hans-Dieter Krause. I got a PhD from the Wilberg University that is uh, just north of here in Gasmir, the beautiful town of Wilberg. And uh, yes, I am very, very good at uh, designing very economical engines. And this is going to be my first attempt at making something that is saving this awful company. And I think they can only succeed with my help. So let, let's see how, how we go along here. All right, so far so classic it looks like what he's presenting to us. And inline three, 800 CC, quite under square. And, oh, here he goes again. Uh, yes, and the, the heads and valves, uh, that's an interesting choice, but not, it's so obvious. I mean, only a dumb person would not be able to choose the right thing here. Of course, we are going direct acting over head cam because we need the lowest friction head there is. And that is direct acting over head cam. It doesn't have a ton of uh, engineering time and it just flows really, really well for compared to... No, no, not really, but but it is, it is extremely good at not using much fuel. And very simple. I can, I can design this thing in like three hours. It's super simple. Uh, for the in internals, it doesn't seem to be caring about much um, fancy stuff, of course. With that stroke, you don't need anything. That's quite obvious. Aiming low there, I see, yep. Um, and cam frame 25, this seems pretty standard. Um, oh yeah, yeah, of course. Yes, and uh, my new development here is a special carburetor uh, that has eco, very big letters of eco written around it. And that is just putting the stamp of quality on it. They are actually manufactured just west of my hometown and uh, it's called a small place called Rensweiler and uh, yeah it's it's really nice there I've been there I've been I've been doing my uh, my practicum uh, in, in Rensweiler it was was a really good time and uh, I told them how to build these things because uh, they clearly didn't know what they were talking about back then um, so yes, we are of course going for super lean fuel, mi fuel mixture uh, because that's the only thing we really care about. Economy. If you want sportiness, you can go fuck yourself. Uh, also, sportiness is not something that people care about anyway. I mean, why would they? Uh, this is this is just how how we roll here. And then I think this this engine, because I created, can rev very high too. So this is looking good. And we need quality. Fuel system quality is important. 
And so for the exhaust, we are going for a short cast. Uh, let's switch off the familiarity because we don't have any anyway. This company is quite shit at the start. And we are going for double baffled. It's not great, but uh, well, if you don't have technology, what are you supposed to be doing, right? So uh, yes, this is our engine and we put additional quality into exhaust too because efficiency. That is good efficiency. As you can see, we can rev this engine to the moon and it's very, very solid at this. Uh, I can even crank up the compression more and we are reaching almost 15% of uh, fuel efficiency. This is unheard of levels of, of, uh, of performance. So I think we are doing just fine here. We could, can we go to 15? We need to go to 15%. Because that is a nice number. I, I don't like rough numbers. So this is perfect. We don't care about power. So don't complain about rough numbers there. Well, um, okay. Well, uh, that's... Uh, do, do you want... Hans Dieter, do, do you want to show them the engine? What it sounds like? Yes, of course. Um, I almost forgot about that. So the engine sounds a little bit like this. Let me push the river, but... Like this. You hear it? Yes, we can't, sorry, we can't rev it higher because that would use too much fuel. So, um, th this is where you're going to use the engine, okay? Well, thank you for that illustration. So now let's take uh, take over from Ansita again and see what we can make of this. I'm going for three gears here and probably need lots of overdrive for this one just to get the fuel economy we want. Um, medium tires, yes, probably go a little larger here, maybe 14s. Yeah, that's about right. Can drop this. I assume the handling will be such that we need smaller front tires, but because they are so thin, they're dirt cheap even if we don't settle for the same width. So that allows us some massive brakes in the front if we wanted to. I don't think we need quite as large brakes in the rear, but this thing is supposed to be drivable like crazy. That is how we are going to sway the market. Economy and drivability. Very easy to drive car, very economical, quite small and shit otherwise, but yeah. Um, so pad type, I think I'm going to aim for 25-ish here and no under tray, let's add some cooling. Ah, uh, let don't don't tell Hans Dieter. H Hans Dieter would be very upset by anything not 50, because uh, lowers efficiency or how he would say. Um, but yeah, we're going for for this standard interior. Can we get away with this? I think so. I think so. This is just a hundred bucks more, hundred and four to be pre precise. And yeah, that's fine. Should be fine. Um, standard safety we don't want to spend too much time on the safety in our first car we probably can add a little bit of steering quality here that oh that tick was half a month there i'm not sure like let's add two for now and now get the tune right because we are still way way off we're in sports sports land uh race land even uh, probably softer dampers, uh, so no, softer springs and the dampers look about right. Yeah, yeah, we do want to retain that comfort. Um, so drivability is very high. Uh, drivability can go higher though. If we just lower that one step, should be good. Yeah, oh, pretty close. Uh, easy tuning here. Let's see which direction we need to go. Is that the correct one? Okay, so we need um, less front sway bar. And can we go for no sway bar? That makes the car lighter, of course. And we get very, very close there. Can we lower this? Yes, we're on the wrong side of things. That's perfect. Can we go even... Oh, that was one too far. Yes. Okay, perfect. So 38.8. We have no sportiness, mind you, but uh, let's now tune the fuel economy a bit we had 8.5 liters per 100k let's see if i find a setting that produces some better numbers now 8.2 is the the mark for right now let's tune the brakes a little and so on and then let's get moving yeah almost hitting 40 drivability that's really good for such an early car i would like to tune this to be a little bit more affordable 
also a little less, uh, a little more sway. This is 6.5 is quite sporty. Uh, oh, well, it's on the sporty side of normal. And we don't need that. Around 7 is where we aim. And that could give us some more comfort back. Let's see. Uh, and I want to achieve that via sway bar reduction in the rear. There we go. But now we need to retune the drivability because that has gone off. Ah, there we go. 100% drivability there. Uh, looking solid. Can't carry anything. But, um, and bottoming out. Uh, can we go up a little? Yeah, it's reducing drivability and such. But it is increasing the practicality. So, yeah, I think another 3 mil there. That should be good. I think it's pretty optimized. Quite happy with this one. Seems to be driving well. We have one complete overdrive gear. It's not used for anything else. We just barely hit 120. Can we slow this thing down a bit more so that we don't hit 120? Because I think that might do something in the calculation. Oh, no, it's at 110. We would have to go be be below 110. Let's tr check that out. Fuel economy. Yeah, it's 110. Um, 12 liters. Yeah, that's not great. It's 3,300. Well, it's not too terrible. So, 8.21 liters per 100k. Uh, you Murricans out there probably are wondering, uh, what the fuck is that? Well, I can tell you. I just checked on Google. It is 29 miles to the gallon. Uh, not, not too shabby. I'm quite happy with this. Let's check the track time real quick. And of course, quick is the wrong word to use. Um, 3 minutes 37. <laughs> well, 13 minutes 37 would be a bit better. But um, yeah, let's uh, take this car. And I think despite it's just 65% affordable, this is going to be doing really, really well. Such a solid build. <laughs> this is just such a good name for this car. We shall call it the Gurnard. <laughs> Very tasty. Ah, oh, awesome. Okay, uh, I love me the the uh, random name generator. That's so good. Okay, and what do we do now? Well, easy. We clone it, and then we change the body around to uh, be a convertible. Then we have so many more markets covered that will be awesome. So we take this one. And just retune a little. Where is the convertible? But uh, I do want to pick another one. Uh, the convertible will come up in uh, no time. One, one sec. Uh, just tune a bit. And for this one, we are going with four seats instead. Because they do like their comfort. And also, uh, I would like to go with the premium radio. But we just can't afford the engineering time at the start. This is too much. Just adding a touch of front sway bar brought it back to the correct drivability and we are at 7.5 degrees roll angle that's uh, fine for a convertible and let's check out the markets real quick yeah that's pretty powerful um, although what are they complaining about low comfort penalty hmm yeah I think the suspension tuning is way too hard for a convertible this is more of a pure driving machine here. Uh, driving, uh, yeah, yeah, driving, as in drivability. Uh, we can tune that down slightly. I think the dampers do still want to be reasonably high, but, oh, that was one click too much. Uh, but we can change the damp, uh, the uh, springs to go lower. Um, now, that is not looking too terrible. Although, I fear for the bottoming out we would have to raise this car too much also of course more sway bars are required to get it back to normal so if we check now ah, we've lowered the penalty low prestige penalty yeah this is a little awkward I mean we can't really put that in there right now but what I would be using to upgrade it later on is the premium radio which directly solves that issue of comfort that is certainly enough, and also prestige. Uh, that just shoots right up there. But I do want to add this in a facelift, because this is just way too expensive at the moment, and also way too tough to engineer at the moment. 
Well, one great thing is that our affordability in the convertibles is 90% at this point. That will, of course, change a little bit after production, but not by that much because we are on a medium one after all. So this is looking good. Let's just select um, family isn't doing quite as well. City is doing really well, uh, despite the body type penalty. And yeah, it is commuter. So let's see how quickly we can put this one out. Ah, just noticed a little bug. This should definitely switch over to uh, some kind of combination of sedan and convertible, and not just be the convertible, uh, the sedan one. Um, but anyway, yeah, I think this is all good. Let's go to the factories. Let's see what we can do. Uh, what are we supposed to call this one? Where is our little factory? Uh, I think this factory is in Narnilla. Yes. Uh, that is our first factory in Narnilla, and we are going to configure it to not suck, hopefully. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, okay, I would love to add the QA testing, of course, but we just don't have the money for it. <laughs> Company valuation is quite high, of, of course, because of all the factory stuff we have, and already have the add-on, but um, if we added that, then we would be digging a hole for ourselves, which is quite deep. Don't quite want to go there yet. This project alone will cost us enough. Oh, let's see what we can do. We are going to produce both of them there. The F46 and the C46. And uh, do we want to change automation levels? We can't in the facelift. Don't forget about this with the new mechanics here. You have to change major tooling in order to change the level of automation and tooling quality. You can always change these. Uh, let's first set that so that we don't run into massive amounts of recalls right away. And 25.6, that's pretty competitive. I think I want to up that a bit to up our build quality because what we need is reputation. You don't get reputation without build quality. Uh, this is looking good though. Do we want to add some quality here. I do want to have the the slowdown come down a bit. Um, it's looking good, but that is so expensive. Holy shit, that's expensive. I think I'll leave it at this and see how the project goes first. That is... <laughs> that's ouchies. It's big ouchies. We might want to um, actually low, aim a little lower to not have that many... said that big of cost. Because what... Oh, how much... No, that's fine. I mean, look at look at that. It's not too bad. It's not going down too much. That is a good way of cheap, to cheap out. And while we don't have that much awareness, we don't need to have the factory tool for maximum automation and maximum output because we're not using the output anyway. Um, of course, yeah, cost per production unit is going down. Let's... Okay, 30. 30, okay, 30. Okay, but this is looking good. We have a baseline of 55 months at the moment. It's not not bad at all for a first car. Let's see if we can get that down a bit though. This is uh, quite the opportunity cost. You, if you can, if you're making a simple car, you don't want to end up with five years of engineering to start out with. Um, if you've been following the latest update video, which depending on when you watch this video is not the latest anymore, but um, currently the latest, when I'm recording this, is talking about how this will be reduced by three years for your first car um, to lower opportunity cost and um, get straight into production. Could be quite nice. Anyway, where do we want to put this? Maybe 35 tooling? This is at 70-ish percent. Hmm. 2,000 cars. That's still more than enough. And can we can we invest a little bit? Into, oh, that's so expensive. Mm, that hurts. Okay, let's aim for 48 months and add a bit more here. Can we? Can we? No. No, I don't want to um, to end up with such high costs. And well, we can go like this and just add a touch of funding. 48. Okay, here we go. I do want to leave the pressure slider where it is to not uh, offset the um, reliability penalty or modifier too much. 
and also to not uh, lose too much familiarity gain from the first project. Very important, of course. So, engine, same thing here. We already have the iron foundry. Uh, let's have that one selected, of course. So, this is going to cost us 96 million. Ouch! Well, nothing we can do about that, apart from taking out loans. But man, this is cheap. This is nice and cheap. Look at that, 18.5. And we don't need to produce five fucking thousand engines. Yeah, cool. Down at 82 million. I can live with that. Uh, or I have to. Ooh, okay. Okay, this is in a good spot. 46. 5,000 engines, way too much, of course. So we can reduce this to 35. I have only 38 months worth of engineering time. That means we can crank up the reliability. Also, this engine, of course, has very, very low material costs. So why not lower that and gain more engines built for only a few bucks? Let's add, let's say, 20-ish bucks. Yeah, 45, that's five points there. Lowers this. Uh, add reliability. Not too much. Uh, 65. After that, it kind of drops off. It, oh, well, this goes up like crazy. And then I can reduce the pressure slider. Let's uh, go a little bit here on the funding as well. That takes off a few million. And now let's reduce the pressure slider until we hit 48. There we go. Perfect. Oh, that's really nice. We're getting so much familiarity from that one once it's done. That looks like quite a project for below a thousand bucks. Yeah. And look at that. They are still in the green, despite our, us fooling around with this. And of course, this is going to show all red. You have to do it manually if you play on insane difficulty, or rather, if you don't have any dealership networks. Uh, we do want to lower this. We don't want the inefficiencies of working night shifts. Uh, we can allow a little target shifts. Yeah, a tiny bit. If we really need it, that means it's going well. So yeah, we can deal with that. And I do want to sell at a minimum of 15%. Look at this competitive pricing. Holy shit. That's great. Yeah, this is looking good. So that is quite something. Yeah, 106, not so great. Can we be more competitive there? Yeah, okay, we can try. We can try, the market isn't great, but uh, yes, yes, on <laughs> the numbers. <laughs> Rounding errors. So let's summarize. Our lineup is the Gurnard F46 MK1 for 6,300 bucks and the convertible version of the Gurnard for 6,800. Um, that's minimum price, yes. Uh, okay. Whew, okay, how much is this project going to cost? Uh, this is looking pretty good. Yeah. So, loan interest amount. Ouch. That's how much a loan would cost us, but we do need to take out a loan. Because this is not enough. Uh, we probably do want to take out a little extra, too. Oh, no, we have the 20... We have the 100 million there, so that's fine. But... Oh, 40 million in cost. Six, five years duration. That's monthly payments of four. Mm, oh, fuck. Four million. I think I'm going long. I'm going 155 million, but only 2.5 million per month. Yeah, it's a, it hurts. That hurts. But I think that's the better way of going about it. As soon as we have the facelift out, we can get a bit more aggressive with less loan coverage and so on. Oh, if things are going well, that is. So, uh, let's sign this off. Are we ready? Gurnard? The Gurnard? Is the Gurnard ready to go? I think you're screaming yes at the scream. Oh, I just heard it from the future. So, uh, sign off the projects. Yes. Live or die by the Gurnard. Uh, this is looking all spot on, of course. And I think this should be it for today. Start of next episode, we need to prepare for its launch and then do its facelift in the second one, of course. So, uh, everything is set up. We do need to um, consider marketing and dealerships as well as... Um, what else? Nothing really. Oh, research. 
I think we should then also invest into research. I'll have a think about that until episode number two. And I hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time. <laughs>